What is the truth of the origin of coronavirus? Was it a virus made in China, in the United States? Is it a natural virus made by Mother Earth? Or is it a test for spirituality to see which spirits are more evolved than others? You must have heard all of these and other stories by now. I'm not here to tell you which ones are true, which ones aren't, but I'm here to tell you how some of these truths are constructed. My name is Rodrigo Guim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. I want to talk today about the dominance of moral or moralist thinking in dealing with the current crisis that we have, the coronavirus crisis. Um, dominant ways of thinking that are moral are always looking to find intention and those responsible behind what's happening now. There is a limit to this kind of thought that uh, wants to find uh, the culprit, wants to find those responsible behind everything that happens in history. There's this uh, moral way of thinking that wants to find bad or good intentions behind everything that happens in the world. And this is very, very, present today. You must have uh, been reading and hearing about how this is a China virus, this is an American virus in other stories, this is a virus made by nature to teach us something as if nature had this intention behind everything that's happening. So you must have heard all of these stories and you must be confused and uh, let's talk about this. In the genealogy of morals, Nietzsche talks about how uh, moral ways of thinking always look for intentions as the origin of actions in the world. Anything that happens in the world, moral ways of thought will look for an intention behind it. So for coronavirus, uh, the stories circulating are about China uh, as intentionally making the virus to dominate markets or dominate politically the world. Others will point to America and how it produced this and took it to China. Others will talk about nature as having an intention uh, behind it of teaching us how to live again. So. Nietzsche talks about all these ways in which nature and history uh, are not thought of as forces, as, as forces that collide against each other. They're always thought of as subjects that have an intention behind everything. So for anything that happens we're, in this culture, we're always looking to find who is behind it, who intentionally devised for this to happen. So this is, for Nietzsche, uh, a way of thinking that goes against nature. Because for Nietzsche, nature is unintentional. Nature is forces fighting each other to dominate one another and to be more powerful over each other. So the virus would be now fighting to live, and in its fight, in its struggle to live, it has come to dominate over our forces. So it's winning, in a certain sense, sense uh, over our forces. So it can then multiply itself. It can reproduce, it can live through our forces. It's, it's dominating our, our human forces so it can live. And that's, that's the way it naturally behaves. But 
for moral thinking, that's not enough. There has to be some conscious conspiratory intention behind everything. Even if it's a good intention of nature to teach the humans of how not to destroy nature so that we would align with the truth of nature again. So there's always a culprit in moral thinking. And that's uh, a weak way of looking at nature for Nietzsche. It's a slave mentality, a slave morality. It's a herd morality. Um, the morality of cattle, the morality of those that cannot deal with nature as this force of forces, this, this conundrum, this struggle between forces to fight against each other so that some may live, some will die, some will steal forces from some other forces so to, to, to be able to live better and more. So this unacceptability of moral ways of thinking and living, that nature would be unintentional, nature would be not for evil, not for good, nature would have no opinion as to evil or good. Nature would have no final judgment on, our, on, on the virus, on ourselves, so as to take an intentional decision. Nature would just be this, this prolific uh, uh, propulsion and struggle between forces that have no intention behind everything. Looking for those responsible behind everything is the politics of the resentful, is the politics of herd mentality. Herd mentality and resentment are always looking to blame another for everything that happens in history. That can, there cannot be for the resentful, for the slave morality, there cannot be a way in which history just unfolds, in which nature is just the struggle of forces uh, that have no intention behind everything. Uh, there can be no uh, just uh, dealing with nature as the struggle of differences. Uh, resentful people, resentful cultures are always looking for culprits behind everything. So they're looking to blame everyone. So when, when this happens, when coronavirus appears, all those schemes that are already blaming someone else for everything in, that happens in history, all those schemes that were already put forth, already happening, are again used to explain something new. So there is no way in which, uh, through this mentality, uh, something can be radically new. Coronavirus cannot be new. It's, when it happens, it's already blamed on those that are already blamed for something. For example, China will be blamed because it's communist. So communists are blamed of everything. So capitalists will blame China for evil because, well, it's communist, it must be evil. This binary scheme of thought, of putting everything into this binary is already placed. It was already there when cor coronavirus happens. So there's no way that a new way of thinking can happen in this dominant way of thinking. Racism is also there. Uh, Michel Foucault talks about how the dominant way of thinking about history can be labeled racist because it's always understanding history as the struggle between two sides, two races that fight each other uh, so that one will destroy another, good will 
win over evil, uh, capitalism will win over communism, and then history will move forward. So racism was always there, was already there when coronavirus happens. Racist ways of thought are going to be placed again because they were already there. History as racism, history as the struggle between two sides that where one is winner, one will be annihilated, will, will lose and be destroyed. This way of thinking history was already set, was already there, and coronavirus comes and it again is placed. So we have resentment, we have racism, resentment coming from Nietzsche, racism, a way of, of thinking history, of practicing history, as Foucault teaches us. These two ways of understanding actions in the world, understanding history, have been here for a long while. When coronavirus comes, it's these ways of thought are dominant again. But struggle is part of life. As Nietzsche says, Life operates essentially, that is, in its basic functions, through injury, assault, exploitation, destruction, and simply cannot be thought of at all without this character. End of citation of the genealogy of morals. In The Will to Power, Nietzsche says that life always lives at the expense of other life. There is no way that nature cannot run through, exist without cruelty. Nature is indifferent to good and evil. There is no final justice in nature, in history, no inherent goodness or evil in nature. Nature is this struggle, constant struggle between forces. So coronavirus, when it comes, it should make us rethink our understanding of nature that would look to nature as if nature had to be good or evil, it should make us rethink history itself as having final justice. It should make us rethink our relation to truth, our relation to life. But it doesn't do that dominantly because particularly in the West, we are stuck to moral ways of understanding being, as having an intention, understanding nature as having an intention, nature as a form of being as well. So we have not gotten rid of our dominant understandings of nature, of truth, of history. Nietzsche says that while we interpret nature in an anthropomorphic way, we are far from understanding nature. Nature is neither rational or irrational. These ways of trying to understand nature for Nietzsche, they always fail because they are anthropomorphic models and they are moralistic models. Nature has no laws. And those who believe that nature has laws are humans who have not yet discarded God and morality in their conception of nature. Nietzsche calls us to reintegrate the so-called man into nature, but that would actually dissolve our dominant conceptions of man. Nietzsche calls us to a new understanding of ourselves as part of nature, but to stop projecting into nature our errors in understanding of ourselves, to stop projecting our morality, our will to choose, and our will to power. All right, people, that's all for today. I hope this is helpful for you. And I want to thank again my supporters on websites like Patreon and Apoyacy that are also my online students that have access to exclusive courses with me. We are now on the course of the History of Sexuality, Volume 2, by Michel Foucault. If you're interested, the link will be in the video description. See you around.